Now, let's get theatrical, shall we? Didn't, didn't work. Oh, there it is. They usually, I, usually I do. And nothing happens. So th this made no difference at all. You see what happened. Before we start, I do have one bit of business to take care of. This is, this is for the internet. Children of YouTube, I know you're out there, and I know the modern era has made you so very smart. I know it has made you smarter than I am now. And I know for that reason, you're probably watching this video, even though I guarantee you, you don't want to see what happens here. That said, I'm not going to tell you not to watch because I'm a big, scary grown-up, even though this is a big, scary grown-up show. But the reason, the reason why is because you believe in magic. And I, I do a lot of stupid things, but I'll tell you this, I never want to take that away from you. So when you understand why I'm asking you to wander off for a bit, come back, watch the video, and enjoy the show. In the meantime, we're going to do this one for the grown-ups. All right? With that bit out of business out of the way, I am now going to destroy a little bit of uh, holiday spirit for you. <laughs> I will now that I've warned off the children tell you about the day Santa Claus was ruined for me. Ooh, did you feel that? It got cold in here. <laughs> it did. It was like, you like, really? Okay, it's getting real. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, I was, uh, I was in New York City and uh, I was sent to bed by my, my, my very indulgent parents, my very tolerant indulgent parents. Uh, and they said, you can listen to the radio. Back then we had this thing called the radio. Some of you remember. The rest of you, it's sort of like the internet, only slower and the pictures are worse. Yeah. Very, very nice courtesy laugh. Keep those coming throughout the evening. I appreciate that. So I was sent to listen to the radio because NORAD would give updates to where Santa's sleigh was throughout the evening. Now, they were really smart about this. They would turn around and they would, they would plan it out. So no matter where you were, if it was past your bedtime, uh, it, you know, the sled was in Kuala Lumpur. It was nowhere near here. Um, I, of course, have been an insomniac my entire life. And so I waited and I waited and I waited. And sure enough, it entered New York airspace. I waited and I waited. And I thought to myself, ah, this is it. And then I actually heard the highly traditional clatter from the next room. Parents' rules be damned. This was a chance to meet the Santa Claus. I mean, let's face it. This is the guy who's got a bag full of everything everybody wants. I didn't want to just get on his good side. I'm, I might have wanted to mug him and take his bag. <laughs> so I snuck to the door, and I opened the door, and as many of you expect, I found out that my very indulgent parents were in fact Santa Claus. I closed the door, thinking I was the smartest of ninjas. Oddly enough, my parents celebrated Hanukkah the following year. <laughs> as they had intended to, except that they had a child that was obsessed with this idea of a particular type of magic, Santa Claus. I got obsessed, and so they, they indulged as long as they could, and then they clearly figured out what I thought I was so stealthy as to hide and I got less presents. May have also had something to do with it. Oh, uh, I, well, you know, I was not a good kid. <laughs> there was no Hanukkah Harry to take pity on me at this point. <laughs> Did I get, I'm, I'm doing that now, actually. <laughs> so, as, as it went on, uh, my parents then uh, moved me out to California. I heard we had some people from LA out here, I'm sorry. Um, just them. Just the rest of us are, are here. Uh, and while I was out there, my, my parents attended Solstice and Yule and several other churches, which led me to believe that my parents' idea of spirituality was who had the best lunch buffet. Let's be the Methodist. The, the truth of the matter is they were, they were exploring the same as I was, which left me more lost than they were. Because after you've seen it all, you, you end up with even more questions. Uh, well, somebody in back thought it was funny. Good. <laughs> so at the, at the end of it all, um, I ended up here with more questions than answers. And the story basically has three simple morals. If you're one of those people who doesn't believe in anything, you know, maybe you believe in science, 
Good. You're, you're, you're seeking the truth. The truth was, I was looking for magic. If you're one of those people who's very traditional and you're freaked out a little bit right now because you're here, wow, your friends are dicks. <laughs> but, but good for you for being here, and more importantly, I want you to know that while you always see people in rooms like this wanting to just come after you, I'm glad you believe in something that you can hold on to for real. It's a big deal to me. And if you're in that last camp, like me, who's still not sure about anything other than the fact that you're not getting enough presents, I want you to know that uh, a couple of years ago, we started this thing, and the very first one of these started up on Christmas Eve. And we thought, oh, it'd be so cool to do the show anyway, and a handful of us decided to do it. And uh, give me a shout if you were there. Just a small number. Everybody else you see in this room, you, we met along the way. So, uh, those people and I always had the idea that it'd be so cool. We always said, well, we'll just open the door. And tonight we were able to do that thanks to some sponsors in our community and give you the show of uh, the show of the year, I hope. The show, you know, that's what I'm looking forward to. I hope that's what you're looking forward to. So if you're sure, if you're not sure, or if you're kind of sure, know this. The tradition that matters most from all of these threads is the fact that we're together right here at the open stage. Welcome. <laughs>